Dipendra Gaja. My title is Royal Elephant because I am the biggest and most respected of all the elephants in the region. I live in Nepal, in the Chitwan National Park, in the jungle of Terai, at the foot of the Himalayas. Chitwan used to be an exclusive hunting area for the English. King George V came here at the beginning of the 20th century to hunt tigers, panthers, bears, and rhinoceros. They hunted so much that these animals almost disappeared. Today, hunting is forbidden. People think of me as a representation of Ganesh, the Hindu god with the head of an elephant. I am the king of animals. Even the gore, the largest of forest buffalo, respects me. My brave Dorai is on my back. His job is that of a mahout. He leads and takes care of elephants. Like most men from Terai, he belongs to the Taru tribe. His life is the jungle. Dorai and I are going to look for my favorite food. And this old rhino is not going to stop us. At last, we found the tree, a superb kapok with tender branches. Tamang, another one of my keepers, comes to join us. He's a patchwa, an assistant mahout. His job is to find the best branches for me to eat. This tree is wonderful. Since I'm very hungry, I help them a little. These trees are only for elephants. A man can be severely punished by the park authorities if he cuts them down for his own use. The forest is very fragile. Dorai was a patchwa before he became a mahout, and he used to do this work. The men take lots of risks just to please me. They know I love to eat from the kapok tree. They respect me very much since for them, I represent Ganesh, the god of wisdom and prosperity. I almost never go anywhere without my young fiancée, Chitwan Kali. She's 10 years old. This young female is very gentle. Her company is very dear to me. Her tenderness is reassuring in this rough jungle. And Dorai knows that too. Once a year, the mahouts prune these trees. And in a year, they'll start all over again. There are thousands of kapok trees in the Chitwan forest. We can change trees every day without compromising the forest's future. And all 22 elephants on the reserve can eat their fill. Once the branches are gathered, we have to cross the river to get back to the village. The men can't take all the food back by themselves, and so once again, we have to help them. For an elephant, carrying branches is no problem at all. What's more, I can go through some of the most beautiful parts of the reserve with my lovely Chitwan Kali. A long time ago, Chin Badur was my mahout. I came to India when Birendra, the king of Nepal, chose me to help hunt tigers in the Chitwan jungle. I was already very handsome. At that time, the royal elephant was called Birendra. 
I learned a lot from him. I wanted to be like him, but it was complicated to become a royal elephant. First, you have to become the biggest, and especially be respected and venerated by the men. The month of January has always been the time to cut the tall weeds. We like them so much that the men call them elephant weed. They used to be used to cover the roofs of our shelters, but today they are only used as food. Every day, Chin Badur used to make the balls, a mixture of rice, sugar, and salt. I can still remember how much I loved them. At that time, the families of our keepers were almost always around. It was nice to see the women and to watch the children grow. It was much livelier then. Today, the village has changed a lot. There are more elephants. The families are gone, but the men do the same work. And the rice, sugar, and salt balls are just as delicious. <laughs> Chitwan Kali, my fiancé, is always around on these occasions, and the men can't resist her. She takes advantage of this sometimes and eats a lot, but nobody says a word. She seems so happy. This is Tagar, the oldest elephant trainer in the region. He's very respected because he knows us very well. Like me, he began his career hunting tigers. Now that it's forbidden, our new job is the conservation of the flora and the fauna. Shiva Tendra is a new mahout. He imitates the gestures he learned from Tagar. Today is a big day. Shiva Tendra, my four-year-old son Gandaki's mahout, is going to teach the youngster the 12 orders he must know to become a royal elephant one day. After this long initiation, the roles will be reversed. Gandaki will become like me. The men will serve him. I remember how hard that first stage of apprenticeship was. It wasn't always very pleasant. Fortunately, Shiva Tendra looks after Gandaki well. He's careful and gentle. What's more, Tagar supervises everything very seriously. The lessons will last for two weeks. In the beginning, Gandaki has to be guided. Two of his aunts are nearby, ready to help him. He learns quickly. Courage, my son. In a few days it will be over and you will be free once again. While some work, we adult elephants and our youngest children who are not ready to be educated yet take a nice bath. Every day our skin needs cold water. It's noon and following my lead, the entire herd heads for the river. It's very hot at this time of day. Our mahouts have to take shelter from the sun.
It's important for our health to be able to cool off. The Rapti River's water is so refreshing. It comes directly from the summits of the Himalayas. It's wonderful to dive in with Dorai. Our mahouts also cool off, and they deserve it. For the young elephants, it's the big moment of the day. Go on, Dorai, rub, rub harder. I love that. My fiancé Chitwan Kali loves it when my tusks are very white. enough playing. It's time to go. I am Dipen Ragaja, the royal elephant, and when I get up, everyone must follow me. Go on, faster. After quenching our thirst, we all go to the forest for some fresh brushweed. Each of us has to eat more than a hundred kilograms of food a day. Afterwards, once again under my orders, we go to inspect the region. We'll travel until nightfall. We're far from the comfort of the village, but this enables our youngsters to get used to the hard life in the jungle. All of our mahouts come from the village of Patana, on the other side of the river, bordering Chitwan Park. Here, everyone belongs to the Taras tribe. Like we elephants, they were the first inhabitants of the Terai region. It's said that they have the ability to resist malaria. It's the end of March, harvest time. Bambar Mahato has lived in Patana since he was born. He has become the intermediary between the animals and the spirits of the forest. Bambar Mahato hardly ever complains. But once again, rhinoceroses came by during the night and destroyed his crop. Every night during my son Gandaki's initiation period, the men gather around him and sing songs to reassure him. If you ask me, they're mainly trying to reassure themselves. Shiva Tendra, Gandaki's future Mahut, also continues to learn, even at night. This old Taru song says that soon we will remove his ropes so that he can go and drink the water of the rivers in Kathmandu Valley and then greet the king in his palace. Last night, from the top of these lookout posts, a Taru peasant tried to discourage a rhinoceros with loud shouting. But, in spite of his efforts, the harvest was still ravaged. We had better go there before there's nothing left. Courage, Dorai, it's early, but we're going to help the peasants get rid of the rhinoceroses.
Chitwan Kali has insisted on coming with me on this dangerous mission. At the same moment, at Patana, Bambar Mahatu had his wife make four clay animals, an elephant, a rhinoceros, a tiger, and a buffalo. They will have the power to keep away evil spirits in the forest. The men are convinced that this ceremony will prevent wild animals from coming again to destroy the crops. Bambar Mahato has been a shaman for a long time. He remembers the time when there was an abundance of animals in the region. Only he still knows the prayers for keeping them away. Ever since we elephants have been protecting Chitwan National Park, a great number of wild animals have come back here in great numbers. We have got to get the rhinoceroses to go back further into wilder country. Bambar Mahato needs help, and so here I go. Rhinoceroses don't like me very much. Although they weigh about two tons and are two meters long, they don't frighten me. Although that female with her youngster looks like trouble. I keep an eye on my beautiful Chitwan Kali. She's so light compared to those brutes. The female elephants are more threatened than the males since they're less imposing. Last year, in this same place, a young female was thrown to the ground by an old rhinoceros. What's more, this one is in heat, which makes him even more dangerous. He really looks like he's in a bad mood. I warn you, don't come near my fiancé. Come on. As soon as you push them a little, they grumble, but they leave. The rhinos won't be ravaging my friend Bambar Mahato's fields for a long while. Mission accomplished. We have a long way to go before tonight, when we have to be back in our village. The Rapti River has lots of fish. Often families from fishing casts settle on the sandbanks. They're called magis, and they have been fishing here for thousands of years. <laughs> As usual, these poor humans begin by talking about the weather. How boring. This fisherman tells us that last night he was very frightened because a tiger came near his cabin, probably attracted by the smell of the fish. His wife heard it growling. My mahout is proud. Animals are more and more abundant in Chitwan National Park. 
The balance, however, between man and wild fauna is not easy to maintain. Dorai knows that I, Dipendra Gaja, and the god Ganesh will work to achieve this goal. April signifies the beginning of the monsoon season. The first rains mark the end of Gandaki's initiation period. Shiva Tendra, under the watchful eye of Tagar, prepares an ointment to treat the minor wounds my son Gandaki suffered in his first contact with the jungle. The Taru know all about the use of medicinal plants. Tagar knows he has to look after us well, since without us, it would be impossible to control this immense natural reserve. Shiva Tendra is almost finished. Like my son Gandaki, he learns fast. This mixture of jungle plants is bound to be effective. I have great compassion for human beings. When they serve me, Ganesh is being honored. The entire initiation period has been difficult, as usual. But now it's over, and we're all relieved. The hardships of the jungle have left their trace on my son's body. We elephants look very robust, but actually we become ill very easily. Although our skin is hard, it's very sensitive to insect bites and thorns. We often get abscesses. Fortunately, the men look after us well. In a few days, Gandaki will be all healed. Next week, his initiation will be over. He will then be able to leave with us into the jungle for several days and continue to prepare for his future role of royal elephant. The Mahouts have always made offerings to Ganesh, the god with the head of an elephant. Shiva Tendra perpetuates this ancient tradition, since Ganesh is venerated for his power to overcome obstacles. This small flame and this incense are offerings of light and fragrance, which will guide my son towards becoming the future royal elephant.